community and a county, and it's got to be an overwhelming affair now, as you can see. Is it still? And we've saved the community quite a bit of money. Right. And it's good uh, for everybody. It's fun. Yes. Oh, yes. So is the water system now complete, or is that something that the community is still working on improving? Uh, no, it's the actual water system itself. We're talking over $700,000. Uh -huh. But we've probably written off close to 100000 of it in expenses by doing it ourselves. Right. Now, I know from that initial 25 people, uh, the fair itself has grown. We've had fire companies from Long Island. We have people from all over the state that come to either view the uh, fair or participate in it. I know that there are 100 thank yous, Jim, and there are too many people that we can actually start to list. Why don't you, as chairman, just give a thank you to everybody that over the years has helped make this such a success? Well, uh, to sit down and, and give names, we could be here all night. I think the community as a whole, and not only Arkville, but Margaretville has come all out for us. All the fire departments that are here today, like you say, from Long Island, uh, Ulster County, uh, Delaware County, they're all super guys. They're just all trying to help us out and all have a good time today. And we thank them all. Right. I know as I've watched the fair coming uh, together, you people have been here late at night for weeks. The Ark, which is the symbol of the fair, this year was built by yourself and other members of the community. It's taken an awful lot of work. And as a uh, member of the, the greater Arkville community, I'd certainly like to congratulate you for the focus you've given us and the fun. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. And thanks, everybody, for helping us to have a big time this year. Thanks again. Thank you. Jim Jerome, chairman of the Arkville Fair, and now we'd like to take you around and show you some of the rest of the fair as we see it here today. We are at one of the most popular spots here today as the temperatures soar into the 90s. We're at the uh, Arkville Fire Company beer truck where they have uh, fresh Genesee cold on tap and we've attracted large crowds and uh, they certainly expect to continue. All proceeds from this go to help the fire company, which of course, as you all know, is a volunteer organization. Chris? Many food booths here at the Arkville Fair, and this one happens to be run by Paulie's Kitchen and Track 28, featuring all sorts of Italian specialties. Paulie, tell us something about them. We got pizza, eggplant, Parmesan heroes, and a dish, lasagna. Pizza. And pizza, of course. And it's all cooked right here on the premises, right, Paul? Right here. All freshly made. And for those people that are watching and unable to make it, where can they get this food after today? Track 28, Polly's Kitchen. Thank you very much, and good eating. Thank you. The uh, Mexican food booth here, and it's run by? Costello. Okay, the entire family? Right. Okay, and what kind of food are you specializing? We got tacos, a frito, and... Uh, tamales and hot peppers. Now what do you do for people who aren't used to food so hot? They gotta get used to it. That's it, yeah, that's the advice, get used to it. Right. Plus we got red rice too. Uh -huh. <laughs> and everything is cooked right here on the premises? Everything's cooked right here, fresh. Okay, very good. Here we have it, Mexican food at the Arkville Fair. I'm riding his uh, horse in the fair. And what's your horse? Asparagus. Spartacus. Spartacus. You got it. You got it. Uh, Spartacus. Riding Spartacus in the fair. A well-trained animal, Phil. Yes, yes. I chased bear with him already. Is that right? I shoot off him. Uh-huh. And yes. were you successful in hitting a bear? No way. No way. <laughs> Take off on me. Take off. Very good. A lot of fun now. How long have you been on Spartacus? Oh, I had him so five years old now. Five trained years old. Him. And you trained him not to be gun-shy and take him oh, up yeah, right I'm, in the woods? I'm, I'm right now I'm oh, working with 20 horses. Uh, out of the 20, I can shoot off eight. So I'm going to give the uh, school on hunting on uh, horseback okay. safety features, you know? Okay. So give it makes it more pleasurable and enjoyable. Everybody has so much stuff up there and easier on horseback. Right. Especially when you get a little on in age, too, you right. know? <laughs> well, that doesn't affect you, I'm sure. No, no, no. Tell us something about where people can get in touch with you should they want to learn your trade. Uh, Sunset Valley Ranch. That's uh, oh, about a five-minute ride out of uh, Stanford. And... Uh, we just put a, a nice corral up, 200 by 100. It's going to be super. Right. We're going to have drunk, uh, barrel racing, jumping, Good. schooling, and plus a lot of safety about the animal and the pleasures of hunting. And all, all the horse. Right, all of the details of horsemanship that one would need to enjoy the animal well, and the relationship. Come and see me because I've got it. <laughs> Congratulations, Pecos yes, yes. Phil. See you soon. Okay, take it soft. All the other food here at the Arkville Fair, we have famous Brooks chicken uh, from Oneonta. 
They've been a favorite of uh, community members for years, and here they are set up at the Arkville Fair. Here we have a couple happy eaters. How's the chicken? Good. Very good. As good as it usually is? Yep. And how about you? Did you already finish yours? I didn't eat. Didn't eat. How come? Too hot for you today? No. <laughs> Why not then? I don't eat. Okay. The chicken is wonderful, though. Yep. Here we are with a representative from Brooks Chicken. Your name, sir? Griffin Brooks. Griffin Brooks. So, a family member? I'm the old. My wife and I originated the whole deal. How long ago was that? Well, 25 years ago, anyway. 25. We've enjoyed your chicken uh, not quite that long, my, personally, but we've enjoyed it for a number of years. What's the secret to your success, do you think? Well, uh, giving people uh, a good value for their money. Right. That's the main thing. Right. I, I agree with you. It's the main thing. You'll come and you'll set up on the site and you'll cook the halves and serve them with potatoes and salads <laughs> and guarantee success. Right. Right. How many halves do you hope to sell here at the Arkville well, Fair? We have 1,800 halves with us. We, we'll sell whatever we can. Right. Well, good luck to you, and we do enjoy your chicken. Thank you. Come on, come on it won't hurt. What None of this like hurts. To tell you? Okay, we're here we are with Sunset Valley Ranch. Yes, my name is Mary Craig. We're located um, right outside of Stanford in a place called Harpersfield. <laughs> there we are. And it's, well, on Route 23, like I said, outside of Stanford. We give trail rides lessons and let's see what else he trains horses and he sells horses and we run a very well good operation if you ask me <laughs> uh, well we certainly are asking you how many horses do you have up at sunset valley um i think it's about 32 33 now so people can come up and ride by the hour and take lessons and go out yep that's right very good and you're offering rides here at the arkville fair yes we are okay very good no, no, that belongs to the person that's helping us okay and here we are with one of the stars from Sunset Valley Ranch. Here's Blackie. Blackie, a little too hot for you? I see they have you in the shade. Yes, it's a little warm. Have you been out much today, Blackie? Just a few trips. Well, you are a smart looking horse and we can see you up at Sunset Valley Ranch. We'll look forward to it. Thank you. Oh, here's a horse dying over here. Oh. Groschel, the uh, owner of the... Uh, steam engine. St steam engine, not the mill. Okay, so the steam engine today... Oh, give us a little history of the steam engine, Louis, please. Well, the steam engine was used in the days before electricity to operate various mills. This particular engine came from a sawmill in Hawkett, I believe. Uh, it's a little on the low-powered side, but uh, I believe it's uh, considered a 10 to 15 horsepower engine. Okay. And, Louis, you're a collector of these uh, steam engines? Is that why you own it now? Yes, yes. I collect steam on gasoline engines. Uh -huh. And then bring them around to fairs and the uh, county fairs for display? Well, mostly here at Arkville because I don't have the time, but I plan to as soon as I retire. Uh -huh. And where have you gotten your interest? Was this something that you grew up with or dad? Yes, yes. When I grew up, these engines were the prime source of power on the farms. And then later on, the tractors took over, and of course, now electricity. So what we're seeing then is the precursor to the power takeoff on the tractor. And very, the farmer, very, yes, yes. The farmer could use it for sawmills or throwing up uh, grain. Definitely, and definitely. And of course, this had the disadvantage. Uh, you look at Ronnie Ballard's pictures over there, you'll see a steam-operated uh, threshing uh, mill where the fire, the danger of fire was so great, they went to gasoline engine, eliminated the fire hazard. So about when did the uh, gasoline engine take over from the steam engine? Oh, in the 30s. In the 30s. Actually, in the 20s, and in the 30s, they were in full, pretty much. I know today one operating steam sawmill, that's all I know of. Where is that, Lou? Bainbridge, New York. Okay. So what uh, allows you 50 years later to run these machines so well? Is that the way they were built, or is that uh, a credit to your mechanical ability? No, definitely the way they were built. Uh, we have an engine over there that uh, was operated at the show last year here and set out in the field all year. We brought it in today and started up with probably 20 minutes work. Right. So simple, they couldn't miss. Okay. 
Okay. Now, today you have your steam engine running off compressed air today, you mentioned. That is correct. Running a portable sawmill. Right. That is okay. correct. And this is, then generates enough power for logs to be sawn? Just about. It's yes, on the small is. side, but uh, we'll show the principle. Okay. Can you uh, go ahead and show us how it's going to work? Are you ready for operation? We are getting that way, yes. Yeah. Just as soon as the belt stays on, that's our problem, to get the flat belt. And how do we do that, Lou? Is there a little belt dressing, or you have no, guides no, for it? No, have to align it. Just align it. See, so you look down there, and those yep. two have to be in perfect alignment. Okay. All right, well, we'll stay here then with uh, Mr. Lou Groschel to see the uh, sawmill in operation with the steam engine. Thank you. Flora and Ron Ballard. Are you uh, Flora Ballard? No. no. Are you here running the postcard uh, sales? No. No, you're just here enjoying some I'm Brooks just chicken? Just here enjoying some chicken. Uh -huh. And where are you from? Uh, right now, Fleischmann's. I had to think. <laughs> uh -huh, you had to think. It's a town that's uh, not easily forgotten. I'm surprised at you. I just moved there, that's why. Uh -huh. I'm Full from time. New Jersey. From New Jersey. And we just sold everything down there and came up here Memorial Day weekend. And well, welcome to the area from WARK, and as one of your neighbors, are you happy with the move? Very, very. I love it up here. Now, you knew the area before you moved up? Well, we came up weekends and just looked around and decided this is what we love, and here we are. Well, congratulations, neighbor. Nice to see you. Thank you. In postcards is? Ron Ballard, Roxbury. We collect local cards, display them for free events, events anywhere for fundraisers locally. Uh -huh. Now are these just pictures of Roxbury Run or the whole area? No, this is all area. Flashman's, Stanford, Dow High, anywhere, any of the local interest places, any of the cards before 1920. Uh -huh. And how long have you been collecting? Always. We always have. I always have. Even since a childhood? Right. Uh -huh. Right. And uh, you display them, I see, very nicely in frames, and then I'm sure you have books or boxes filled with them. Oh, sure, sure. But I don't sell them. I strictly collect them and keep them. Sometimes we trade a few cards for one card we want. Right. It's the way it's done, yeah. And, and do you have a particular interest drawn, such as trains or no, Christmas cards? No, just general area interest. Now, with many of the other collectibles these days, postcards, of course, have gotten very valuable. Do you have an estimate of to the worth of your personal collection? No, no, I don't really. Okay. I don't really because really the value of my collection isn't great. Uh -huh. It's uh, 
It's something that's happened. I've always managed to trade cards or else sell a few and get one real good one that I want of the area. It's and I do buy from other collectors and dealers. Right. And one good one, one good one that you want would be a particular view or a picture of a building that no longer exists. Right, right. Any of the areas that are no longer the Shaver Town and where the dams were built. The right. bu yeah, the, that's what the real interest is. Arena, places like that under the yeah, reservoir. Yeah, and Gilboy especially. Uh -huh. The old village of Gilboy, we've got pretty near the whole collection. And uh, in order for the postcard to be valuable, it has to be in good condition, is that true? No, not necessarily, no. Not if it's a local interest card. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the corners can be ruined on it and the, can be faded right down to almost back to the original black and white shade. What's the oldest card in your collection, Ron? Uh, 1897, the one with the owl on. Uh -huh. it's, that, is, that was the first year they, I understand that they, you could legally send a postcard in the mail. Top row, third from the left. Yes. So do you also then have valuable stamps or interesting messages no. on the backs of these? No. No, we don't. See, I, I loan these to the newspapers once in a while, like the Stanford Mirror Recorder, and they print the card and what's on back of it. I see. Sometimes it's quite interesting when they do it that way. It's really a wonderful way to keep local history, yeah. and uh, oh, thank yeah, you for welcome. sharing it with all of yes, us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Just you? Rocks wow. and gems? Yeah, Mickey's Rocks and Gems. How's that? Here we are at Ricky's Mo Rocks and Gems. Almost got that wrong. Mickey, of course, also makes wonderful pizzas at Ricky, and is this a side light for you? Uh, well, yes, it is. Okay, and do you sell the Rocks and Gems? You uh, tumble them yourselves and polish them? We did, yes. Mm -hmm. My husband did it. And where do you collect them from? All over, all over the world they come from. And do you actually go and pick them up, uh, Mickey, or will you do this through dealers? We have done some, yeah. We've picked up some of our own, most of it through wholesalers. Yeah. Would you show us a particular, I see some agates, I see some uh, crystals. Show us some of your okay. favorites, if you would. I'm very particularly fond of the geodes and the amethyst and some of the Brazilian agates. Brazilian? That's Brazilian, yes. Brazilian item. And, and then we have all kinds of cabochons to put into jewelry settings, you know. Will you do that also, Mickey, or you'll just... Yeah, I have it? some, yeah. I can do that. And I see some interesting rocks in front of the geodes. What oh, are they? those are selenite, selenite roses. Selenite it's roses. a natural formation. They find them in the sand in uh, Utah. Thank you very much, Mickey, and good luck to you here. Thank you. Some color on your left, those animals. Sabia's Horse and People Shop, is that, am I saying that right? And this is Sabia? Right, this is Marge Sabia. Marge Sabia, welcome to the Arkville Fair. Have you been here before, Marge? Uh, have you been? No. No, this is the first year. First year. Okay. Uh, are, are you glad that you're here? Sure are. Okay, and you're selling all sorts of uh, horse-related uh, goods, cowboy hats, horses themselves? Right. Real horses. Okay. Stuff that you make, Marge, or you buy yourselves? We buy. Okay, and is there a shop uh, where people can come? There is. It's in, uh, located in Jefferson. It's um, about 45 minutes from here. Well, welcome to the Arkville Fair, and we hope to see you again next year. Thank you. Rabbit display, which looks like uh, iron work extraordinaire. Walking up, we see uh, Mr. Paul, the creator of all these. Paul, welcome. It's great to be here today. Is this your first visit to the Arkville Fair? No, this is my second time back. I'm a, I'm a returner. You're a returner, and are you pleased uh, to be back? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay, tell us a little something of your work, if you will, Paul. Um... It's all handmade by me, and it's all for sale today. Everything's for sale. Everything's for sale. I see a pair of shades on your work table. Is that for sale too? Ten dollars. Ten shade. dollars for the shade. Is that per lens, Paul? Uh, no, the whole. These are the Roy Orbison model shades. Yeah. Uh, would you uh, give that for I'll demonstrate how these things work. Okay. Here. Now, what do you have to know to put these on? Uh, what you try to do is you, you line up these two pieces here that stick out so they do not go into your eyeballs when you're injecting them on your well, head. You did here. that very smoothly. 
Yes, well, I've been practicing. I was here last year, I told you that. You right? Oh, so you did this for a whole oh, year? Oh, yeah, I've been right. practicing since uh, this time last year. Right, have a little rendition of Pretty Woman then, while you're wearing it. <laughs> I don't know the words that one. All right. And your work, uh, what do we call this piece here? This piece here is, uh, this piece here is called Nova One. And it's the uh, world being blown up and the new world coming out. And it's, uh, I don't know, can you zoom up in this? Mm -hmm. Has all these little men in here with guns. Uh -huh. And then that's a Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan over here, Ku Klux Klansman. And then these are MX missiles over on this part. In the center is the nuclear radiation symbol, symbol being I shattered see. apart. And this is the air and the water and fire. Very nice. And are these, this your work over here in copper as well? Yeah, all these pieces over here. Quite a contrast in, uh, in design work, I see, going from uh, the end of the world to uh, something with a little more whimsy. I see the man on the bicycle and the swans or geese. A spark plug airplane. Spark plug airplane, well done. And have you been... Yeah, well, I've, I haven't been doing uh, well, this here, too, junk stuff. Mm -hmm. Lots of junk stuff coming out this year. Very good. Tent selling yard goods with uh, Mr. Mike York. Mike, uh, welcome to the Arkville Fair. Is this a return visit? Uh, no, this is our first time here. This is all very well and good. It's going to make me look fat. Oh, no, no. This is a slim lens. Oh, is it? Oh, very good. <laughs> Guaranteed to uh, knock off uh, 13 or 14 ounces. Terrific. Good. Tell us something about the yard goods, Mike. Uh, this is my wife's department, actually. So okay. Uh, this is Sheila. This is my wife. Sheila, welcome to the Arkville Fair. Sheila, tell us something about the yard goods, please. What you see is what you get. Cotton, Cotton uh, linens, flannel, polyesters, lace, gauze. Can people buy this somewhere other than the Arkville Fair if they're not able to be with us today? Uh, not at this price. Not at this price. Hurry down, folks. Chance for a special price. I can tell you what, though. There's a lady down here who's just trying to um, move what she has left, and she's got a cheaper price than I do. It's an honest woman for you, ladies and gentlemen. Sheila, good luck. Mike, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Take care. A Native American of the... Yankton Sioux. Yankton Sioux from the South Dakota, Dakota. South Dakota. Right. Uh, you're selling uh, Native American arts and crafts. Right. Everything here is all authentic Native American work, uh, from Eskimos up north to uh, people out of the southwest, so that uh, a wide variety, so people see the difference in what the different uh, peoples do make. Uh, from baskets to weavings, uh, I have some original artwork, uh, leather work, bone work, bead work, so that there's a nice variety of, of authentic work. And is this a private enterprise, uh, Meg, or oh, is yeah. this go? Yeah, this is uh, all my my things. What I'm hoping is that eventually I'll make it into a, a regular business. I, and who is this, please? This is my uh, oldest boy, Mato Topa. Hi, Michael. Hello. Welcome to the Arkville Fair. <laughs> Although he dances at the at the festivals. I understand. Yes, you'll be at the Hunter uh... Hunter Festival. Mount, right, uh, the Mountain Eagle Indian Festival at Hunter okay. Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. Right. And that's something you've done. Uh, this will be years. the third year at Hunter, right? And uh, we're hoping that the turnout will be even better than last year. Uh, in fact, Walt Harris, the artist who was with us last year, commissioned a, a painting just for that festival this year and uh, we've got posters that are done up on that so that's going to be it he's going to be there to sign the posters and stuff like that with dancing and singing and oh, yeah. more arts and crafts oh yeah in fact uh, we have the uh, Tanazi and Aztec dance group that's coming in from California that's going to be doing all Aztec dances we have a Pueblo group coming in from the Jemez Pueblo that'll be doing uh, all traditional southwestern dances then we have an Iroquois uh, group that will be doing all Iroquois dances, and then we have our general presentations in this. We also have a group of Native people coming in from Bolivia that will be doing all uh, Andean music, and uh, they'll have a workshop showing how they make their instruments and things like this. Uh, we've got, you know, demonstrators, Betty Dupree, and, and people like this are all going to be there demonstrating how the crafts are done, how they're done from scratch. Andean music was just made popular with the pan pipes, is that correct? Yeah, Recently basically. it was a commercial release? Uh, well, these people have been doing it for years, and uh, it's how they support their villages, is to go around and, and, and 
play their music and they also give information as to what's happening with their people in South America and so on. And uh, the music's been around, but I think what's happened is in, in the last couple of years an interest in, uh, how shall we say, ethnic music uh, or minority type of music has kind of taken uh, a hold and now you find people like this in uh, a position that more people want to hear them and yet they've been around for a lot of years. So. So Labor Day, three days? Uh? Yeah, it's uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And uh, hopefully, if things work out, we're going to be trying to put something together for Friday evening, a small concert type of thing of uh, native performers that are musicians. Well, but that's in the workings. Good luck, and thank you for putting us in touch with our history. Right. OK, thank you, and have a good day. Margaretville Arkville Community Station. Channel Our shop has expressions of beauty and practicality. Expressions of thoughtfulness. Expressions of decoration. Expressions of enchantment. Expressions of whimsy. Expressions of style and taste. Expressions of pride and love. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 till 5.30. Closed Sundays. Expressions at the DeBerry Home Center, Bridge Street, Margaretville. Hi, I'm Robbie Rosenblatt. This is Jeremiah Stone and Dane Hamway, and together we're the Sander Man. We can take a floor that looks like this and make it look like this. The Sander Man has over 800 satisfied customers, and if you would like to be one of those, please call us at 607-326-7979 or 586-3978. Thank you. This is Larry Smith again. Hope you're enjoying our presentation of the 1984 Artville Fair. Along with my partners Jeff Samuels and Michael Finberg, we have started WARK TV, a locally originated cable TV station. We all enjoy TV and know what it has to offer as a special medium. Recently, Jeff, Michael, and I have been examining TV's potential to serve us in a more intimate, local, and neighborly way. We, meaning all of us in the Margaretville Artville communities, now have the opportunity to produce shows that feature the talents of ourselves and our neighbors. In essence, we now have our own cable viewer participative channel that can bring us closer together as a community. For example, storyteller David Hayden has been touring local elementary schools. Recently, Jeff Samuels has been filming him telling his tales to our local youngsters. We have footage of ice climber David McWinney giving a demonstration of this rather unique sport. We have softball games, cooking shows, interviews with local business people, and footage of many local events. We're looking for much more. To make it really work, we would like your participation. We would like you to volunteer your special talent and let us make, a, let us make you a local TV star and help us out by letting us know what you would like to view. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. And now back to Michael Finberg and the Arkville Fair.
Well, hot day uh, here for the Arkville Fair. It's wonderful. Yes, managing to stay cool under the tent? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's very nice. Now, are you two, are you two the ladies responsible for the goods we see in front, the rag rugs and the quilting? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And something you do alone or in quilting? No, bees? this is uh, Halcott Ladies Aid, mm -hmm. Halcott Center, New York. And we work for the Methodist Church in Halcott. Proceeds from your sales go to help support the church? Right. Mm -hmm. okay, and what do you have here on your table? Well, we have handmade rugs, qu a quilt, and an afghan, mm -hmm. and then we have dishcloths. We don't make those, though. Uh -huh. That's the only thing that's not handmade. We're looking at uh, many, many hours of work, no doubt. Oh, definitely. Right. Something that brings you pleasure as well as oh, uh, some support? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And your history with uh, making uh, goods, is this something that goes back to your childhood? Or no, so? not particularly, since I moved up to, to uh, Halcott. Uh -huh. I'm president of the Halcott Ladies' Aid. And your name, please? Edith Westlake. Edith? And this is Cloretta Reynolds. Loretta, welcome. Thank you. And in my, in my history, this sort of thing does go back to my childhood. To your childhood, Loretta? Uh, I didn't make them at that time, but that's what my mother had on her floors. Uh-huh. And mom and Graham would be busy making that's them right. there? That's right. That's right. So as a young girl, you grew up watching them and learning just by that's watching them? That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, do you have some of those things from your childhood still in your home? I'm afraid that they're worn out before now. Uh-huh. Right. Well, that, that, of course, is their purpose. If you didn't have you. this thing, I'd tell you how many years they were no, worn no. out. No, <laughs> no. We know that it, it's probably only been six or eight. Yeah, that's okay. right. Only the eight and the five go together. <laughs> the eight first and the five exactly. afterward. <laughs> well, congratulations, and let's hope Thank for you. another uh, that many more. Thank you very much. Now, what are you from? Catskill Mountain News? No, we're from WARK. We're a locally originated television station. Oh, I see. And we're filming the Orkville Fair, and then we'll show it over the Margaretville and Orkville cable. Oh, I see, I see. So mm -hmm. we filmed the parade earlier, and now we're going around meeting some of the exhibitors and uh, spectators here uh -huh. at the Orkville mm -hmm. Fair. That's nice, yes. that's nice. A very good advertising, too. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. and thank you for your time. Thank you. And thank you, Edith. And thank you, too. Bye-bye. Right. Here I am with uh, Jackie Reither, who is a uh, Margaretville school teacher, and she's here with her hobby. Jackie, what is it that your hobby uh, is? Just sewing uh, craft items. I'm not into sewing clothing and that sort of thing. These are just crafty items that you can use for decorations or what have you. And would you show us some of them for the camera, Jackie? Do we have some dolls here in front of us? I have, you know, a doorstop mouse, both two sizes, this size and the large one. Uh -huh. Then I have... Um, Just point to them. Okay. Just the tissue houses that cover, you know, the boutique tissues. I have some little clutch dolls for children. I have some other types of dolls for uh, that you can hang up or sit on a bed. And I think that's it. I had some towel holders, but they're all gone. Well, congratulations. Now, is this your first year selling your crafts uh, here at the no. Arkville Fair? This is the second year. And are you pleased to be back this year? Yep. Enjoy it. I have to, This way I get to visit with everybody. Right. Well, it looks like you're doing it right here with your good friend Peg Sweeney on my left, sitting there, uh, comfortable chairs, selling, and uh, good luck, and thank you for sharing it with thank us. Thank you. Very nice, Mike. Yeah. Okay. With this. Tell us from a distance, then, without showing your pretty face, what is it that you've done? He can't hear me, can he? Is this Hannah? W-A-R-K, Margaretville, Arkville Community Television Station. Stenciled uh, clothing and wooden boxes? Hand stencil, stenciling on cloth, wood, and paper. That's my thing this year. And your name, ma'am? Holly Voss. Holly, is this your first year here at the Arkville Fair? This is the, uh, what is this, the third this fair? Then I've been here at each one. A veteran of all three. Right, charter member. Is this one as good as all the others? Paul? I can't tell yet. Let's see. It's a quarter to two. I'm going to give it a little more time before I get, you know, unenthusiastic about it. It's an awfully hot day. It certainly is. And where do you do your work? I have a little studio at home, and yeah. I work at where home. Where is that? Up at High Mouth. In High Mouth. Yes. Very pretty face. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. We need some muscles back Hello. there, Lily. Here we are with uh, Sal's Bun and Cone Fried Dough Stand here, another of the wide variety of food uh, that you can get at the Arkville Fair. Sal, tell us a little bit about fried dough. Fantastic. Today is going great. It's going great, even on such a hot day? Beautiful. 
We have a best day today. Better than last year. Is this something you sell in your store as well? No, this is something new. Special. Now, I see you have a couple of uh, pretty young girls working for you. Who are they? Yeah. What, where is the Lily? Lily, come and say hello. Come and say hello, Lily. And say hello, Lily. Lily and Dana. Dana, Dana. Dana, Dana. Dana turn this way. Come on. Okay. Very good. Have to shy. Lily, tell us uh, how one makes fried dough. He makes it. Okay, well, what, what is your job then besides uh, selling them? Just serving the customers. <laughs> and do you sprinkle a little uh, powdered no, sugar? No, I don't. You don't do anything, you just hand it to them. Right. Dana, what do you do? The same, same thing. thing. She does. The same thing. Okay, well, I see you're busy. You have to have two in help, and of yes, course, the master behind the scenes. It's great. This, this is fantastic. This is the second year for us here, you know, it's best. Yes, it's been the best. Yeah. So we'll look forward to seeing you again next sure. year? Yeah, we'll be here next year again. Thank you very much, Thank Sal. You. Name, sir. Johnny Reese. Johnny? John Reese. R -E John Reese. R E E S E. And John, where are you from? Oakville. Oakville. Now, you've lived here your whole life? No, I lived here about three years. Three years. You're glad to be here? Yeah. Yeah. So, this is your third Oakville fair then, John? Yeah. Well, enjoy yourself. I see you're keeping cool with a bandana. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, is this your mm -hmm. wife, John? No, Fen. Is your friend and your yes. name? Alice, Alice Mooney. You, Alice Mooney, you're mm -hmm. enjoying yourself here too, yep. Alice? I'm from Margaretville. From Oakville? From Margaretville. From Margaretville. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, the big city. Oh, yeah. yeah I've nice. been up here about three years, too. Good. Well, nice to have <laughs> you. Yep. And here behind, we have some young uh, fans of the Arkville Fair. Who are you, please? Jennifer Mills. Dina Robinson. Jackie Jerome. Jackie, uh, are you having a good time here, girls? Yes. 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 What is it that you've enjoyed most? Everything. everything. Yeah, everything. Everything. Yeah, everything. I see you have uh, a picture of yourself on the balloon. <laughs> no, it's Snoopy. Snoopy on the balloon. Okay. Well, thanks for talking with us. Thank you. And then right next to it, where it is. People having a wonderful time out here on the lawn oh, who's that? by the caboose. <laughs> We're about to uh, have the live entertainment start in a few minutes. The band is setting up now in the back of the caboose. And here you see some of the many more booths. We're inside the Maple House where we have the model railroad set up and running. It's a wonderful layout. It's probably uh, 40 or 50 feet long. It has uh, elevated tracks over a bridge. It has the watering station. It has the switcher. And the trains are going around here for the pleasure of all of those railroad models aficionados as well as those people in the back. Over on the wall, we see an old cable or streetcar running right along the chair rail on the wall. Automatic switching. Many more handmade goods. <coughs> train masters of the uh, train layout you just saw, Mr. Bill Rosenberg, welcome. Hello. Joe Rosenberg, too, is my brother. Bill and Joe Rosenberg. Now, this is quite a layout, uh, Bill. Tell us something about it. Well, it's LGB, made in Germany, gauge one. And uh, all these were sent to Germany, mailed to us. On it. You can buy it here in a hobby shop. And, uh, but they don't have as many as we got from Germany. And this here car here is the Arkville train. The Arkville train. Yeah. So are these special orders then, Bill? Yeah, yeah, special orders. You tell them what you want and they send it back? Yeah, we mail order. And how long does it take for them to fabricate the trains that you asked for? Oh, about three months before we get it back. And most, most of the houses are plastic models. They're all outdoor trains. This track is outdoor. You can leave it outdoor all year round. And the trains you just take in during right. winter time. Right. Yeah. And uh, this is electrical powered? Electrical powered, yeah. They make this size in steam, mm -hmm. but they're a lot more expensive. Right. So we just go into this. How long have you been a uh, train hobbyist? Well, on this type, we've been for four years. Mm -hmm. And the other type, we have N gauge home and Z gauge. Right. We have that for 30 years now. Yes. <laughs> now, does this go back to your childhood or is this Child something? Childhood, yes. Childhood. Yeah. 
with your brother. You've been collectors. Right. Mom and Dad started you with Christmas presents Most, and birthdays. Mostly my father. Yes, Dad was a <laughs> trained man himself. He was a trained man, yeah. And, and this, this whole uh, uh, outlay costs about $8,000. $8,000. Well, it certainly is beautifully done. And you, you and your brother certainly did a fine job laying it out. Oh, we enjoyed having it up here. Just to watch the kids yes. watch it. Right. So what you're building here is some more Bill and Joe Rosenberg to the future. Right. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Pleasure. Maple House, we see some other wonderful uh, arts and crafts. And uh, tell us something about them and who you are, please. Well, I'm Joe and Bill's sister, and this is his other sister. Uh, we do this as a hobby. Everything on this table is handmade by my sister and myself. And they're ceramic yeah. works? Ceramic dishes, wicker furniture she makes, and uh, food, plants, just about anything you can imagine. We've tried it. <laughs> now, I see that it's small scale. Is this made primarily for doll houses? Doll house, one inch to one foot, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did your interest in that come as your brothers did from childhood? Uh, well, no, it came from my sister. <laughs> <laughs> she started me on it, and uh, it's just evolved into this. Yes, we have doll houses, a couple of them, in fact, both of us. She has a large Victorian house that has how many rooms? Eight rooms, all totally furnished. My brothers built her the doll house. Hilda, how did your interest in this uh, start? Well, actually, I had doll house when I was very young, and I had nothing to do when I got older, so my sister said to me, why don't you start making furniture? My brothers bought me my first set to make, and here we go. Did, <laughs> all you, of this. did you think they were all being silly at the time? No, not at all. No, it's a love that I just rekindled, that's all. Well, you certainly have done a wonderful job with all of this. Good luck. I have a lot of help from my husband, too, who uh, also is involved in the little things, you know, helping me out. So uh, we're a very artsy-crafty family. I see that, uh, very artsy-crafty. My Uncle Joe was making the wicker furniture for us and he passed it on to me, showed me how to do it, and then I continued on with it. Well, good. We are back at the, the uh, in front of the Artville Fire, fire Department, where they're giving out the awards the for the, all of the participating fire departments from all over the state. They're gathered here in front of the fire hall, receiving their trophies. The fire truck goes to the Artville Fire Department. No, I'm sorry, wrong. <laughs> this appearing fire truck goes to Ulster Hall. Announcing this is Larry Davis from the Arkville Fire Department. Okay. Handing out the trophies is Nelson Delamere. Fire Department travels the longest distance. Okay, now listen up here. We have two of them here. We're very proud of one. As you know, on the other side of the tanker sitting is a mat, which we bought from Port Washington, Flower Hill, Travel Fire, Flower Hill, Port Washington. Along with them, don't get it wrong, we're bringing in another one, Cy Austin, two of them. They have two trophies. Anybody here from Flower Hill and Cy Austin, please? Congratulations, we appreciate you guys coming. Is presenting the awards is Both president of the Arkville Fire Department. Fire Chief is fire Nelson Delameter handing out the awards. On the other side of the hill, we went by a percentage of what you had in the fire department, not what you had in line today. I'm coming and hope to see you next year. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Larry. And of course, thanks a lot to the Arkville Fire Department. They're the host company. Uh, a lot of this wouldn't be possible without them. Also, uh, we want to thank all of the companies that came up here. Uh, we hope we see you all next year. I, I think it's safe that we'll see uh, Ulster County again. Ulster Ulster here next year. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Thanks a lot and congratulations to everybody. I don't think they understand what Here we are in front of the uh, Rotary Ice Cream booth, which has to be at least the second most popular uh, place to be on a hot day like this. Selling ice cream for the Rotary, we have Dave Summers. Dave, tell us a little bit about your operation. Well, we come here every year to sell ice cream, and it benefits uh, student exchange programs and community projects. Okay, and have you been selling a lot of ice cream as well? A lot of ice cream. A lot of ice cream. It's a real hot day. Yes. No trouble keeping it cold? A uh, little trouble. We took care of it real quick. Uh -huh. And uh, what seems to be the most popular flavor today, David? Well, let me check with the men here. All right. What's the most popular flavor today? 
Butter pecan. Butter pecan. Vanilla strawberry. Ah, uh, was that a full list, Herman? Uh, very full. Very full. Sales are going great. <laughs> Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Good luck to you. Home baked uh, goods. We have pies of all descriptions. And we have some of the. Uh, excuse me. Are you the bakers of these wonderful delights? Oh, some of them. Okay, Everybody. And where did the rest come from? Oh, our, our church. Okay, and which church is that? Margaretville Methodist Church. Margaretville Methodist Church. And what kinds of pies uh, have the girls put together? Apple, rhubarb, pumpkin, chocolate, cherry. And all of them are selling well? Oh, yes. Very well. Oh, yes. Looks delicious, ladies. Don't forget to say Here we have some more handcrafted uh, goods made by some of the local members of the community. We have dolls and pot holders and pillows and bonnets and gloves. Who has made all these wonderful delights? Arkville Community Fair. Okay, all of the volunteers then have donated. And who are you, ladies? I'm Catherine Hosier. I'm Rose Van Steenberg. Okay, Rose, ah, Rose, you're also in charge of the booths here at the fair. We've done a fine job. Everybody seems to have enough space, and thankfully, much of it's in the shade. Thank you. Fine job. Now, Rose, you've been involved with the fair for before, or is this your first year? Oh, no, I, ever since it started. I understand you start tomorrow planning for the fourth annual. Yep. We, we do it year-round. Now, Rose, from the uh, three years that you've been involved, uh, do we have a larger crowd this year than in previous years? No, we... No, we had 10,000 people last year. Uh -huh. But I don't think we have 10,000 people. Do you have an estimate on the crowd size? No, I don't. Not, not, a, you know, not a final estimate. They uh, estimated it from the air last year. Uh -huh. But I haven't heard about it this year. It certainly seems to be a success from all the people we've spoken with. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you. It's part of the live entertainment here at the Orkville Fair, the Vagabonds Three. Glenn Mills on drums, Al Giese on guitar, and Stella Rupsamen on the organ and vocals. the museum shop uh, from the Schoharie Museum, <laughs> excuse me, Schoharie Museum of the Iroquois Indian up in Schoharie, and we have a number of uh, handmade goods by Native Americans, and in the booth here we have Mr. Frank Garza, who himself is a Native American of the Choctaw tribe, am I right, Frank? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> is this your first year here at the Orkville Fair, Frank? Uh, representing the uh, uh, Schoharie Museum, yes. Uh, uh, right here are the royal articles of uh, Iroquois from the St. Regis uh, uh, reg reservations, some of them Mohawk, uh, some of them Seneca, uh, handmade baskets and uh, beadwork. Uh, beautiful articles that uh, the museum uh, let us represent them uh, to sell here at the fair. I took my class up to the museum, as you know, and one of the things I purchased for myself was a uh, basket made by a uh, woman on the reservation in the popcorn design, which I thought was just wonderful. It was probably Mrs. White. She's a Mohawk. Uh, we have many of other one, articles uh, here, too, of baskets that is made by, probably by the same one uh, that you have. Beautiful sweetgrass baskets. Tell us something about sweetgrass itself, Frank, please. Uh, very, very sweet smelling, and they interwove that, weave that into baskets, uh, and it makes it very, very uh, fragrant in odor when you smell it. And it's, uh, you can put things on the inside that are clothing, articles of clothing on it. stays very sweet smelling for a very long time. I'd like to show you a piece of art, if I may. Okay. That is over here. And this was done by Stan Hill. Uh, it is out of a, a deer a horn. And uh, it is a very, very exquisite piece of art. Uh, also, this bear that was made by Eva Fadden. These are all uh, Mohawk, uh, Mohawk or Seneca Indians. As is this well a cornhusk doll? Yeah, this is a cornhusk doll. He's doing a, doing a dance with his false face on. Uh, uh, this was made by uh, 
Jim Skye uh, from the Six Nations uh, tribe from St. Regis Reservation too. All the articles that you see here are made uh, by Indians uh, from the New York uh, area, which is uh, Iroquois. Well, thank you. The museum certainly is a wonderful learning experience, and I enjoyed my time there. Right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Frank. Thank you. Mr. Gene Lane for the FTA. Gene, what is the FTA? The For Fur Takers of America. Okay, and what is the purpose of the organization? Well, we're trying to protect the rights of all sportsmen. Uh, I don't know whether it's too well known or not, but there's a lot of people that do not want any animal killed for any purpose. And what's, what's your position on that? Well, it'd be pretty hard to eat without killing animals. And it's much more humane for an animal to die quickly than with the diseases that they get when it overpopulates. Okay. So that's, that's the main part of my thing on it. It's disease is very bad. Mother Nature is cruel. And do you advocate then a specific kind of trapping or hunting of these animals so that their death is quick? Uh, it has to be controlled. I mean, it, we have a very good uh, DEC department in New York State. And they control things very well. And uh, I think they're doing a great job. Right. And they do this by counting the animals and then issuing a certain number of license per season? Right. They, they control the number taken by the length of seasons or the number of permits given out for a particular animal. And uh, they keep on top of it. It's you have some wonderful specimens here in your booth. Tell us something about the animal behind you. Uh, this is a local coyote. Uh -huh. uh, I don't really know who got it. Andy German up in Roxbury is a taxidermist that did all this work. Uh -huh. He did a very nice job on to him. And he donated them to us for the day to, to show people. Okay. People uh, want more information about your efforts. Uh, how should they find it? Uh, they can write to the Fur Takers of America at Box 196 in Arkville, New York, or write directly to me, Gene Lane, at Box 135, Arkville, New York. My phone number is 586-4005. Thank you very much, Gene. Thank you. It's best uh, jams and jellies where we have some free tasting. Is this Val I see behind yes, the counter? It yes, it is. Okay, Val, uh, you made all of these by hand? Yes, they are all home homemade. And you collect the berries yourself? Oh, well, some of them I do in such quantity. I have to buy quite a few of them. Right. And are they all local berries, Val? Yes. Okay, and where do you actually then make your jams and jellies? I live in Rensselaerville, New York. So you've come a little way to be here at the Arkville Fair. Quite a ways, but it was worth it. it Everybody's was. nice here, yeah. Very good. This is your first year? Uh, yes, first year here. Well, we hope to see you again next year. Thank you very much. What uh, What are some of the samples I see here in front of me? Uh, I have peach rum. I have plum walnut. It has diamond walnuts in it. Pear ambrosia. has pear pineapple and coconut. May I have a little taste of the uh, pear ambrosia, please? Help yourself. Okay. Thank you. Pear, pineapple, and coconut. I can see why you call it ambrosia. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Can people buy these besides in the jar in some sort of quantity? Uh, yes, yeah, you can buy them in quantity, or I can make up different gift items, uh, anything they'd like. Well, thank you very much. It was delicious, and good luck. Thank you. Well, we certainly hope you've enjoyed our uh, show here uh, featuring the Arkville Fair, the third annual. We uh, hope to be back next year doing the fourth annual Arkville Fair and certainly hope that the weather and the feeling of camaraderie and friendship exists for the fourth Arkville Fair. This is uh, Michael Finberg for WARK signing off from the Arkville Fair. Your Margaretville Arkville Community Station. The following is a WSKG TV Reaction Line program. Watch it carefully. At the end, we will tell you how you can give your reaction to it. Major funding for Frontline is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Additional funding is provided by this station and other public television stations nationwide. Tonight.
right on Frontline. Animal testing. It's done in the name of science, but animal lovers say it's cruel. The public, by and large, is very unaware of how, how hideous and how painful a lot of animal abuse is. Scientists defend their work. It is a price to pay if one wants the advances of medicine to occur. It's a debate. What are the limits of experimenting with man's best friends? From the network of public television stations, a presentation of KCTS Seattle, WNET New York, WPBT Miami, WTVS Detroit, and WGBH Boston. This is Frontline. Good evening, I'm Judy Woodruff. This year, at least 35 million animals will experience pain, fear, or suffering. They are half of the 70 million animals that are the subjects of medical, scientific, and commercial experiments in laboratories across this country. They suffer for the sake of consumer items, like mascara and oven cleaner, but also for cures for cancer and heart disease. There are people in this country who passionately believe this should be stopped, that no animals should ever be used in lab experiments. The medical and scientific community is equally adamant. They say animals must be used if we want progress against killer diseases and safe consumer products. Tonight, we look at that conflict, at the difficult ethical questions surrounding our care for and use of animals, and at people who are struggling to strike a balance between the rights of animals and the interests of human beings. We call the program Man's Best Friends, it is produced by Joel Sucher and Steve Fischler. They are nearest to us on the evolutionary scale. Most of their genes are identical to our own. It is this very similarity that makes them the subjects of experiments which, for ethical reasons, cannot be performed on people. Primates have been used for a wide variety of experiments. These monkeys, housed at the National Institutes of Health, will be used in the study of cancer and infectious diseases. But behavioral scientists also use animal models to examine such concepts as love, fear, and loneliness. In this classic experiment by behavioral psychologist Dr. Harry Harlow, baby monkeys are separated from their mothers at birth and subjected to different stimuli. The purpose of this experiment was to study the very nature of love itself. But if we admit certain similarities, do we also admit certain obligations? It is this issue that has challenged the scientist to defend what happens in the laboratory. In a laboratory, the members of the public may say th see things that they uh, disagree with, but only because they don't understand. And it may take, oh, a considerable amount of time, it might take weeks, to educate that person to the point where they understood why that that procedure had to be carried out in just exactly that way and in no other way. This is footage of experiments conducted by Dr. Edward Taub. What happened in his laboratory attracted national attention and became the subject of intense debate. In his experiments... I held on a minute, I guess. I want to time out for a minute. Well, here we go again. Gerard pitches the ball. Good, slow pitch. Doug almost attempts to swing at the ball, but no cigar. Vic Stevens tries to steal down a third, and the catcher, Vinny Cura, tries to throw down to Josh Slater, and Vic Stevens comes back to second base. Gerard pitches the ball. He pitches down, and it's up, way down. Vic Stevens steals down to third base. So far, Vic Stevens been getting around the bases only on steals from losing the ball from the catcher, Vinny Cura. 
Wonder what's the problem with Vinny tonight? Was doing a good job earlier, but Vic Stevens is around already. Down to third base. Doug Van Steenberg still up to bat. And Gerard pitches the ball down. A little slow one, but not too good. Doug Van Steenberg was walked down to first base. Next is Holly Jenkins up to bat. Gerard pitches the ball. Strike one. There's one out here, and uh, they try to make the play, check the runner, and go to first, hopefully, because it you got Doug Van Steenberg on first and uh, Vic Stevens on third. Drive pitches the ball down. Harley almost steals. They get, oh, nice play. The catcher, Vinnie Kerr, throws the ball down to Josh Slater. Josh Slater gets out. Doug Van Steenberg, but a play is stolen home. Vic Stevens made the play home. Nice try by Josh Slater. Okay, you got two down here. Harley Jenkins is still up to bat. Gerard pitches the ball, slow pitch. Harley Jenkins swings. A strike three, and now next is B. Michaels is up to bat. Well, both teams are really coming up now. It's getting a little chilly out here tonight. The ballpark and Fleischmann's and All right, it's a three-run score in bottom of the fifth inning. And like I said, both teams are really looking good. Score is now nine to four, Titans favor. Three score, three runs scored in the bottom of the fifth inning. Well, B. Michaels is up now, and Haskins is up to bat. That's their shortstop player. <laughs> well, here we go. You got Haskins up to bat. They're big Dino up on pitcher's mound, ready to pitch the ball away, and Haskins is ready to swing, and Haskins swings out to center field, which is not caught, and Haskins down past first, down into second base, it goes down to third base and tries to make it home, but he hangs out on third base. Nice hit by Jeff Haskins. B. Michaels is really looking strong here. What do you think, Lindy Weeks? I think, I think that they're uh, doing very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. is really looking strong tonight, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are. So what team are you rooting for tonight? I'm rooting for B. Michaels, of course. Oh, yeah. Because they're definitely putting an effort towards it. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. They're good. They're good. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> you got the next up, Haskins up. Haskins swings and foul tips. Too bad for Haskins. He's looking good tonight also. The big Dean is really getting furious out there on the pitchers, man. He really wants to get this guy out. But Dean Haskins gets ready to pitch. Dean pitches. Oh, Haskins swings. He is out. Nice try, Haskins. Next at the bat is Art DeBerry, the big hitter. Art DeBerry also hit a nice outside hit. Made it down to second base and brought in a run. He is really doing good tonight. Big Dino really wants to strike him out also. He pitches down the ball. Good pitch, strike. It's one and one here. Art Barry's really gonna poke this one out. Good one. Art Barry pumps out over first base of a big Dino. Art Barry runs down to second. He puts on the slide and he is oh he is out. The play was oh what a play. Art Barry is pulled out. He tries. The play was changed. Art Barry is safe. He is safe. The ball wasn't fully in the other Doug Van Steenberg's glove, which made him safe. The hit was hit right over Big Dean. I mean, this Big Dean is really big. Popped over, snapped out of the glove. Well, Titan Drillin's really getting furious. Next up the bat is Walker. Well, 
Time is being delayed here because when Art DeBerry slid down to second base, he really knocked out second baseman. Well, the plate was knocked out. Excuse me, not the basement. Well, you see they're jumping up and down the plate, make sure it's in there. I guess Art really pulled it out. Well, Art is a really big guy, you know, and I guess with all that pressure, I think I'd come out too. <laughs> so we have Lisa George here. So what team are you for? <laughs> Walker's at the bat. That's one and oh. Dean pitches the ball. Good pitch. Two strikes. Dean pitches. Oh, way down the ground. Art tries to steal, but no cigar. He runs back to second base. Count is two and one. Oh, he is three and one now. Art still tries to steal a second base, but I don't know. Maybe he will make a nice slow pitch. Well, Walker takes his base on the first base. You got Art DeBerry on second, you got Walker on first. See, Walker was taken out of the game, and uh, Michael Weeks was put in. Michael Weeks is on first base instead of Walker, and you got Vinnie Cure up the catcher, and he's got one strike on him. Vinnie tries the bunt, but he didn't make it. Well, on first baseman, this is uh, Lindy Weeks, his brother here. Yeah, what do you think about your brother Michael playing on B. Michael's team? Well, Vinnie Kira pops it out to center field, and Art tries to steal, but uh, he just doesn't make it. But nice hit by Vinnie Kira. Well, you got Blatz coming up, the big hitter. As you see, everybody backs up all the time. Blatz is up to bat. I guess he's a real poker. Yeah. Well, Dean pitches the ball. Good pitch, but it's a ball. Ball one. Well, that's ball two. Dean on pitch. Well, Dean gets ready to pitch again. He pitches down to Blatt. And ball three. And loses it. Art DeBerry steals down to third. And Michael Reed goes out to second. And he's safe. Way to be, B. Michaels. Way to be. Okay, you still got Blatz up to bat. Dean pitches the ball. Oh, wow. High ball. Blatz is walked to first base. Way to be, Blatz. This is a really, this is a big uh, rally here, I guess, and uh, B. Michaels is looking strong. B. Michaels hits down Shepherds up to bat, which is hit down right to shortstop. Well, the game is over here. Well, no, it's not over. <laughs> Sorry about that one, but uh, Clint Cure is really uh, confusing me over here, and I really can't see what's going on because of Clint Cure. <laughs> well, as you see, this is Lindy Weeks, my buddy from Pine Hill, and uh, we can have Ricky's team, which is going to be one of the excellent teams this year. We're going to win, of course. It's going to be pretty good, right, Rosemary? Right. I mean... We have a team that team is, is so good. Right. Our team is alright. We play together. <laughs> well, as you see, B. Michaels is out in the field now, looking strong, and uh, Titans up to bat next. Well, Titans up to bat. We got Gilbert Story coming in. He's not on the list.
next. I guess he's poking for someone else here. Let's see what he can do tonight. It's first time up to bat tonight. We still got George Lennon on up in first base over here, and uh, everybody's looking good. As you see, the crowd is getting really rowdy. Gilbert pops it in the air up to first to the pitcher to Gerard DeBerry. Gilbert's really upset. But what could you do when the ball is caught by a really good team, B. Michaels? another batter, which I don't have on my list, but I guess he's poke hitting for someone else. Gerard pitches the ball, which is popped way up in the air, which is ball one. Well, I know his name is George, but that's about it. Gerard pitches the ball again. Ball two. I guess George wants to hit. Gerard pitches the ball down. He's poking him in the air, and George is down to first base. They got one man on first base. <laughs> Gerard pitches down to the ball. Long way, Lindy. <laughs> George steals down the second plate base. Well, Clint Kerr, I guess, couldn't keep the ball in his hand. Excuse me, Vinnie Kerr. Well, Clint's his brother. I just keep on getting his names confused here. <laughs> Gerard pitches the ball. Good pitch. He hits it out to right field, which Blatt has caught it. Good play by Blatt. George tries to steal off second base, but Blatt is quicker than you think. He threw the ball in, right to shortstop, and gets the ball right in. George is still stuck on second base. Well, Billy Russell is up next. He's their center fielder. Let's see what he can do. Gerard gets ready to pitch the ball. He pitches the ball down, which is a good pitch. Strike one. Bill Russell tries to steal off second base, but she can't make it. Gerard pitches the ball again. Good pitch again. Bill Russell caught out. Hits it down to shortstop. Caught by, by Jeff Haskins. It's two down. Double play. George ran off the plate before you knew it. Well, folks, as you see it, you know, looking strong. And hopefully we'll be doing better tonight. And a little cold out tonight, but uh, I guess we'll pull through it. <laughs> As you see, I'm in shorts, and I know I'm crazy, but <laughs> I just came back from practice, and it's all I had on. <laughs> but Josh Slater starting off the batting order over here. Well, Titans looking pretty strong out there tonight. See if uh, B. Michaels can make a comeback over here. The score is nine to five here, and Titans in the lead. B. Michaels is up to bat, and maybe they can bring some runs in to at least even it up or be ahead. I guess the game's getting started. Dean Hunter gets ready to pitch, and Josh is at the bat. Dean pitches the ball. Good pitch, but high and outside. Dean Hunter gets ready to pitch again. He pitches. Good pitch. Strike. It's one and one. 
1,500 thinks he got it made, but let's see what he can do. He pitches the ball again. Good pitch, Josh pops out to left, right field, which is dry. Ollie Jenkins just couldn't hustle fast enough to get that ball in. Josh Leonard is on first base. Nice hit. Next is Elworth. He's up to that. See if he can bring Josh around. Dean Hunter is getting ready to push the ball. Pitches the ball down to Elworth. Elworth hits it out to center field. Josh hustles down to third base. Elworth down to second base. Josh is on third. Nice hit. Elworth made it to second base. Brought Josh to third base. Way to hustle. Ball is hit right out to center field. Nice play by Elworth. Next is Gerard DeBerry. Poke hitter. Let's oh, see Dino's getting furious out there. Ball went right through him. All right, Dean's ready to pitch the ball. He pitches the ball down to Gerard DeBerry, and it's a strike. Strike one. You got Josh Slater on third base, and we got Rolf Elvers on second. Pitches the ball. Gerard nails it down the shortstop. But the point is Gerard. G Gerard is sick. He's running down to second base. He tries to steal. He runs back to first base. Gerard is there. Josh Slater runs home. The ball is Play Gerard the very confused Doug Van Steenberg and George between first and second base. Meanwhile, to what Josh Slater ran home and Elwood ran home. Nice play by Gerard the very. Ready to be. Haskins is up. Let's see if Haskins can do the same thing. Nice play by Gerard the very. Way to be by Gerard the very. He's on first base. Well, as you see, uh, Titans having a pep talk in the catcher's mound. I guess they're really furious because Gerard made a good play out there. <laughs> well, everybody goes back to their positions, and I guess maybe they're afraid of Haskins. Maybe he's going to do the same thing Gerard did. Think. What do you think, Lindy Weeks? Well, I guess he is. Haskins is their shortstop on uh, B. Michaels. And He's ready to hit the ball, and Dean Hunt is ready to pitch it. Dean pitches the ball. Good pitch, but high. B. Michaels is really getting rowdy now. Dean Hunt gets ready to pitch the ball. He steps up to the plate. He pitches the ball. Good pitch, but Haskins pops up in the hair and hits the net and is fouled. I guess that's one and one, folks. Well, Titans really getting nervous. I guess B. Michaels is doing a great job. Dean pitches the ball again. It's a ball. Two and one. Way to be. Okay, Dean Hunter is getting ready to pitch the ball. He pitches it. Good pitch. Haskins swings. That's two and two. It's a good pitch. I'm going to also swing. Okay, Dean Hunter is ready to pitch again. He's getting ready to pitch the ball. Pitches the ball down, and good one. Haskins hits it down the second. The Doug Van Steemer with Gerard DeBerry is out. But Jet Haskins is safe on first. That is one down. Good play. Well, Gerard DeBerry got out on second, but he brought in some runs, which was really good, and he also had a good play there. And Haskins down on first base. Next, you got Haskins again, another one that plays center field. Kenny Haskins is up to bat. It's balls pitched and it's ball one. Haskins on first base is trying to steal off the second base. Oh, you got ball two there. Haskins trying to steal off first base. The pitch goes by. It's ball three. Hey, right, you got one out here and ball three. Dean pitches the ball down. Good pitch and Haskins has walked. You got man on second. You got two Haskins up on the field. You got Haskins on first and Haskins on second. Now you got Art to bury at the back, the big Art, the one that stole to second. The one who popped out to the field and brought in two runs. Okay, Art to bury at one ball here. Dean pitches the ball, and both Haskins try to steal off the bases, but the ball's coming in too quick. Haskins. Dean pitches the ball. Oh, good eye, good eye, Art to bury. Dean Hunter is getting really worried now. He puts down the ball. A little bit high. Art DeBerry is walked to first. Both Haskins are on first and third and second. Art on first, and you got bases loaded. 
We got Walker up next. Walker is going to be doing something out here tonight. Oh, Walker is a first baseman on B. Michael's team. And if he hit an outfield hit, this would probably even up the score here a little bit. Okay, bases loaded. Dean's getting ready to pitch, and Walker is up to bat. Walk, Dean pitches the ball. Oh, low ball. Ball one. Ball one. As you see, Titan is really getting worried. They don't like those calls that we put called over here by the umps. Dean Hunter pitches the ball. He's getting ready. He pitches. Nice pitch, but Walker swings. Walker swings again, that's two strikes on him. He got bases loaded here and there's one down. Dean pitches the ball, oh, high, way to be. Close call for Walker, too. <laughs> Dean Hunter's getting ready to pitch the ball. Oh, low, full count here, you got full count. B. Michaels is getting rowdy. Listen to that roar. Dean Hunter pitches. Good slow pitch. Strong. Yes, he made it down the first base. He was walked. A base, a play is walked in. Nice play. Titan Drill is really scared now. They're looking at the umps and everything. They think the umps made a bad call, but it was a low outside pitch. Vinny Cure is up to bat. Still, base is loaded. One ran, just ran in. Good pitch. Vinny Cure pops it out through the pitcher. To second base, Douglas Deaver makes it in. One run. Walker is on third base. Vinny Cure is on first. Great play by, by Vinny Cure. Way to beat. B. Michaels is really roaring now. Listen to that crowd. Listen to him. Platts is a good hitter. As you see, they're all having pep talk over here in the crowd. Titans is really getting worried. And, uh, I know, I guess they're scared. Steven Josh right here. What do you think of the softball game, Steven? Really, seriously, Steve, uh, what do you think about, uh, who's, who do you think is going to win tonight? Who? Probably Michaels. <laughs> oh. Well, I hope you're right. Well, Flax is up to bat, and I guess Titan is really furious. Look at that team put on a roar. But as you see, B. Michaels is rowdier than Titan, and I guess B. Michaels is going to have it tonight. We'll see what shows up after this. Vinny Cura is on first base over here, and he made a great play, and hopefully he'll try to make two to one. It's only one out, folks. <laughs> Well, I wonder when they're going to start this game here. I guess uh, they're going to pull someone out and change the positions. Oh, guy on second got hurt over here, so uh, that's Doug Van Steenberg. So uh, I guess they're going to be putting in Alan Gavitt. Alan Gavitt uh, is going to be playing second base because Doug Van Steenberg got hurt. Hopefully Doug will be okay. I guess we'll find out pretty soon. Blacks is up to bat, but she just got ball one. Vinny Cura tries to steal down the second base, but he can't make the play. Let's see what Blacks can do here. Dean pitches, and it's uh, one and one. Everybody tries to steal on their bases over here, but no one can really make a move on it. So Dean Hunter's getting ready to pitch. He pitches down the ball, which is a ball. It's two and one. Good eye, Blacks. Good eye. Okay, Dean Hunter can pitch again, he pitches down the ball. Good pitch, but Blatz pops it in the air. Alan Gavitt calls it, everybody tries to tag up and make a play, but no, the play was saved. Alan Gavitt made the act, that is two down. Well, now we're top of the order, Shepard's up to bat. Shepard 
yards up the bat and really pitches the ball. Shepard swings and is tipped off in the end of the stick. That's one on Shepard. Well, you got Vinny Kira still on first base and Walker on third. And I guess they want to come home. Let's see what uh, Shepard can do. Shepard swings. No, the ref is calling no pitch. The ref is calling no pitch or no play. It is a redo. We'll see what the story is here now. They're pointing out at first Vinny Kira. Well, I guess he could do play. He's up the bat again. A play was called in which no one knows, and the Ums are making a hassle about it, and I guess Shepard's up to bat again. Uh, well, I don't know what's going on here. Well, Shepard wasn't out. Shepard had another chance. So now the ball was thrown as the ball, and Vinny Curtis steals down at second base. Lucky for B. Michaels, they're looking really strong tonight. Dean Hunter's really getting worried out there. He pitches down the ball, which is a nice pitch, but it is fouled off of foul territory. Well, Titans really worried now. Look at that bench. I mean, have you seen such a sad bench? Look at them. They need some pep. Titan will be really playing strong tonight, you know? Well, Shepard popped up in the air to Dean Hunter, which is down uh, three outs now. Uh, we have uh, Karen Mann here. Uh, who do you think is going to win tonight? B. Michaels. That's good. B. Michaels is pretty strong tonight. And, uh, yeah, um, but as you see it, we're looking really strong tonight, both teams. But uh, B. Michaels is really strong tonight. As you see, you know, our cameraman here is taking uh, pictures of the field tonight and seeing uh, what's the show here. So B. Michaels is really looking strong. Well, starting off this thing now is uh, Scott McMurray. Well, no, excuse me. It's Tom Sanford up to bat now. Tom Sanford is their left fielder. He's second batter up. Scott Sanford is a left-handed batter and probably poked to the left field. Scott Sanford tries to bunt the ball. Which it was strike, which is a foul ball. Vinny Curry still makes the play down to first place to Walker. Well, the crowd's really furious now. Look at that B. Michaels crowd. On this side, there's no one's really into it. I see they're just drinking their beer and uh, looking at the camera. You know, uh, Gerard pitches down the ball, which he tries to swing again, which is a foul, but he has two on him. Well, you got two balls, two strikes here, and uh, Gerard DeBerry's looking good out there. Gerard throws at the ball. That was a ball. It's two and one, folks, two and one. Gerard's getting ready to pitch. He pitches down the ball, and Tom swings. Oh, Josh Schneider almost had the play. Popped in the air. Tom's on first base, and the play is caught down in second. Tom's staying on the first. Yeah, you got Scott McMurray up to bat now, and he's been doing good tonight. Then you got men on first and no outs. Well, try to make a steal here, but uh, Scott, excuse me, uh, Tom Sanford didn't run. Because he didn't see it. Ten to nine. B. Michaels is in the lead. Scott McMurray tries to butt the ball, which he is. Oh, he was hit with the ball. Batter is out. Batter is out. Scott McMurray, I hope he's doing okay. He got hit with the ball from Vinny Curry that threw it down in the first baseman in second. Oh, Tom Sanford's still on first base. He 
We've got George Lenning still lumping on first base here, and uh, wow, I really hope Scott's doing okay now. We've got the big Dino up to bat now. He's a big hitter. Gerard pitches down the ball, which is a strike. Nice pitch by Gerard to Barry. Tom Sanford tries to steal off first base, but just can't make it. That's one and one here, folks. One and one. Gerard pitches the ball. Slow pitch. Dino pits it out. Way out. It is a home run. Dean Hunter hit a home run. Tom Sanford is going home. Dean Hunter is trapped his way home. Nice hit by Big Dino. Wow. Nice try for B. Michaels. Well, folks, that was a big home run. 12 to 10. Here we are at the Fleischman's ballpark. They see Titans really wild. Seventh inning, and uh, it's 10 to 12. The game was won by Dean Hunter, which hit a home run over the fence. It was a good game. You know, Blacks really tried to get it out there. And, uh, you know, Blacks, you made a really good play out there. Nice try. Played a really good game. Really, it was a really good game. As you see, here, this Titan really came out strong. And uh, this is the end of the game, folks, and bottom of the seventh inning. And it's 12 to 10. And I hope you enjoyed the game tonight. And this is Rosemary Costello saying good night and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you.